Nanti sih gue berani. Dik, aku tuh umur gua. Welcome to the Square, a show that brings you the very best in debate and conversations on current issues in Rwanda and beyond. Coming soon, tune in to Rwanda Television every Wednesday at 9 p.m. for the latest edition of The Square. Good evening and welcome to The Square. Tonight's discussion is going to focus on the girl, Girls Get Equal campaign. This is a campaign that has been done uh, in Rwanda uh, by Plan International. It was launched in early on uh, this year. And uh, joining us uh, on, the, on this particular topic is the country director for Plan International Rwanda, William Mutero. Great to have you on the show, William. Thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here, you and I'm proudly feminist. Great. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I love this introduction. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and also talking about, uh, while we're talking about the Girls Get Equal campaign, we're also going to talk about gender equality and issues uh, that affect uh, women and girls, including teenage pregnancies. And on this topic, we are also joined by the Young Women's Christian Association Gender Focal Point and Senior Manager. She's called Robina Chambade. Thank you for well, uh, in honoring our invitation. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure to be to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Dan PC, host of The Square. As always, The Square is made up of its resident panelists. Uh, amongst them is Berna Namata. Great to have you on The Square, as always. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we are also joined by Charles Haber, resident panelist of The Square. Great to have you. Well, it's a pleasure, Dan. How are you? Good. Good. Yes, before we begin, we have what we call our midweek highlights. I'm sure you, the viewers, uh, know these midweek highlights that the Square Resident families share before we kick off the show, just capturing some important events uh, that have captured our attention uh, during the week. And um, I know before we started this conversation, there are a couple of interesting <laughs> things you're talking about before the show began, but let's keep it short and sweet. Charles, what's your midweek highlight? One, I think Rwanda is an extremely dynamic society, and uh, you could see from the huge uh, cabinet shake-up that was there uh, two days ago uh, that saw a few new faces coming in and major shake-ups. But to me, that, that, that did not take me by surprise because, again, as I said, Rwanda is a very dynamic society and we are accustomed to this thing. But one of the things that shook me was uh, the, the infamous uh, tweet by, <laughs> by, the by the Basketball Federation about uh, somebody who was very creative about <laughs> how he proposed to his fiancée. Mm -hmm. There's nothing original about that. Yeah, no, no, no. If there was nothing original, <laughs> then it wouldn't have made all the noise that it made on, 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 on the social media. On mm. social media. Mm. But, but two things. One, we need to embrace art, and that's one of our biggest issues that we have. The, 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 in the New Times, during the course of the week, there was a story around how certain you know, innovative ideas around entertainment come and die. We need to appreciate that um, as a society, we need to embrace a bit, a bit, quite a bit of flamboyance that mm. is expected. Including the proposal at the yes, Rwanda, for, for crying at out the loud. Kigali if, um, arena. Yes. I think I would have had a problem if Angola was playing Rwanda mm. in a World Cup qualifier and such a thing happened. But you're, you're in the middle of an all-star game. It's all about the fun, the flair, the slam dunking, the, the dancing queens, and, and, and all that. It's, just, it's, it's about all that fun. Mm. So you, you just don't snap it short. That's my biggest issue with it, yes. <laughs> Brenna, midweek highlight? Um, just a brief comment on that. I think the major issue is exposure. Um, some of the people managing uh, these uh, associations or behind, they have no idea. So perhaps the beginning point should be to 
get them to experience the world, you know, where basketball games are, and then they'll get to know what actually happened. So there was nothing new or out of the ordinary that happened. Um, secondly, this week again, it's sports, you know. We, we have, sports is making uh, a lot of headlines. Um, there, there was a story on, on, on one of the sites. And for me, my concern is that we don't see um, a lot of uh, appetite to use the right channels to raise uh, media complaints. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is concerned about uh, a story that the media has done, we have the Rwanda Media Commission. Can you be a bit more specific? You're quite vague on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you have a complaint yes. or you feel that the story has not do done justice. Was there a sports, board, a sports body that had a complaint? Um, there was a statement issued by the Rwanda uh, Cycling Association in response to a story that had been done. Mm -hmm. Now, in my view, I think if the Rwanda Cycling Association has an issue with the story, they mm -hmm. should go to the Rwanda Media Commission. Mm -hmm. that is <coughs> Doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. So we need to respect the institutions mm -hmm. that have been put mm -hmm. in place and, and, and use them. Mm -hmm. And you're assuming that people know this? Well, no, they do, because you <laughs> have stated it. I mean, in place, in the first place. If they had systems in place, then they would know. If you have the right PR officer, then they would know where to raise the complaint. If you have some... Yeah. Absolutely. All bodies, I think, various media bodies are the task with handling these particular issues. Let's get into why we are here this, this evening. William, thank you for joining us once again, and Robina. Um, so let's start with learning a bit more about the Girls Get Equal campaign. Um, the Girls Get Equal com campaign is Plan International's new global, global campaign, uh, like I said, which was launched earlier this year in March. And that it is a youth-led social change campaign that aims to advance girls' rights as well as promote gender equality. But the question is um, to you, William, to kick off. Uh, what is the what is new about this campaign? There's been the Hish for She campaign uh, in Rwanda before. There's the Bahoneza Integrated Health campaign, as well as the Safe um, Space. Uh, safe yes, gender equality works on Rwanda, but it's to a certain extent. I personally think that we have a long, long, long way to go. Um, I'll give you an example of how very recently I'll, I'll still expect my sister to do the dishes at home because I felt that the ladies, my mom, my sister, they are the ones to take care of those, those small things at home, not be the ones who are ambitious and want, wanting to do good business as they wanted. So we are on, the, on a good path, that, that I would say. We are trying, and uh, I will say that this new generation, the, the, I will say that um, the millennials, they are more aware about gender equality more than our parents were. And by our parents, I'm talking about all the generations that are post the, of the post-colonial era that are not in the 21st century. Yeah. So I will say that we are trying as a new generation, and uh, there is hope, there is hope. But it's, we surely have a long way to go. But uh, that will be aiming for perf perfection. I think uh, gender equality is mo mostly implemented here. Women no longer face as much hardship as they did or as much as they do in other countries because Rwanda has come to embrace the value of, the, of women and of men. And we're, we work hard every day, I believe, to show the equality and represent the value of all of us in this country. So, William, uh, back to you. If you can tell us, I mean, based on a couple of comments we've seen um, from the word on the street, but what is the difference, what is the unique factor of the Girls Get Equal campaign? Thank you. Uh, what I can start off by saying is Plan International globally has been working on issues related to gender equality for a long time. Actually, our purpose as an organization is to advance children's rights and equality for girls. So the, the key difference with is what we are actually trying to do. So let, so let me explain. Mm -hmm. So this is a youth-led social change campaign where the focus is we want to change how girls are seen, 
heard and valued, right? Those components are very critical. So what we are saying is girls need to have the capability, need to have the freedom to change their world, their lives, without any threat or harassment or any barriers that they continue to, to face. So what we have seen over time is that girls do face significant challenges of different, you know, uh, multitudes and, and they come from different places. Mm -hmm. So this particular campaign I think is a good fit with the other campaigns because it takes a lot of actors and a multi-sectoral approach for us to really address the issues that confront girls. So our campaign says the three key pillars is around power, freedom and representation. So let me quickly explain these words because, you know, sometimes they sound like big words. But power really is to say we cannot talk about girls' issues, come up with policy positions, come up with actions when the girls are not there, mm. right? We need to hear the voices of girls in issues that affect them. Because if you really want to understand the issues that affect girls, ask the girls themselves. It is clear that girls themselves have the capabilities to talk about the issues and the barriers that they see. So that's the first aspect. The second aspect is to do with freedom. So we want girls to decide what to do with their lives, their careers, their bodies, to move anywhere in any part of the world without any fear of harassment without any limitation. So a girl must make an informed choice about this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So if I live in this community, well, it's not time for me to get married. I don't want to get pregnant. I want to pursue this career, even, th even though that this field is male dominated, mm -hmm. but this is what I want to do. And she must be able to make that decision without any fear or discrimination. So we mustn't apply stereotypes and, and expectations on them. They need to have that freedom to determine what they want to do with their lives. The last one, representation, is key because by and large, the large majority of issues that we hear about girls, especially in media, mm -hmm. is about the negative stories, yeah. which perpetuate the negative stereotypes that affect girls. So how many times do you actually read stories about progressive things or major achievement that girls have done. What we read is the negative side. So this has happened to this girl. We have issues with this. We have issues with that. And a lot of it is really quite negative. And what actually it does to the consumers of the media, it mm -hmm. perpetuates the stereotype around girls. So what we're saying is the representation of girls, particularly in mainstream media, has to start to bring to light the more positive stories about girls and their capabilities. Not to see them as victims all the time, not to see the negative end, but actually to celebrate quite a lot of outstanding achievements. Because from household level, I can tell you here in Rwanda, there are a lot of girls who are doing fantastic work from household level to community level to national level. Mm. But those stories don't make up the acres of space or time in media. So we need to change that and have more positive stories about girls. So our campaign is really about not us leading as Plan International. We are supporting the girls and creating an environment, but we want the girls themselves to eventually lead this campaign. So we don't see it as a timed campaign. We want to start a social movement around gender equality issues and where girls are participating effectively. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Wow, um, in a nutshell, you have, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bought on the concept of, of the unique factor. Uh, Berna, you know, I could see you, you, you nodding a lot when you were talking about, uh, uh, when you were talking about media, you, you know, a media practitioner. Do you have comments on that? Yeah, I was actually thinking about, uh, one, the privilege that uh, the media in Rwanda has, which is, um, I think as of uh, yesterday, the cabinet uh, representation of women mm -hmm. went to 56, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, but it's almost the highest, you know. Um, 62. 62? Yeah. Yes, 62. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't have these women covered in a more positive light. Mm -hmm. um, so... I feel that the media in Rwanda is in a privileged position because these women are there mm -hmm. and you can find them. Mm -hmm. But I think where we have a bit of challenge is within the private uh, sector. Mm -hmm. um, the few times we try to reach out, most of the times, um, well, you still have the barrier of the key decision makers are still men. So when you try to approach uh, the woman who would probably be a deputy or 
she will still refer you to her boss, mm. you know, or wait for clearance uh, from her boss. And uh, back to the issue that he raised uh, in terms of how uh, young girls are nurtured, mm. you will find that uh, eventually some of these aspects undermine their potential. You know, you can't be loud, uh, you can't... Um, you can't be straight, you know, about issues, uh, because mm. if I could talk from experience, mm. I, I meet many people who will say, you know, uh, who's going to marry you mm. with the way that you talk or <laughs> <laughs> the way that you, you talk know? on the square? <laughs> yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. And this is the reality that so many women have to go through. Yeah. Um, even today, for some of these uh, women that are leading key institutions, mm. they're grappling with these issues. Uh, you know, because you are appointed today and then your husband is like, oh, okay. Mm. Now you think that you have so much power, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah, so the reality is such that a lot of work uh, has to go into not just the ma when people are mature, but, mm. you know, where they spend a lot of time growing up, mm. building their confidence, uh, <laughs> making them believe that, look, it's about potential mm. and you have the potential. Mm. So it's not about how good you look mm. or, you know, there's, there's a lot of social um, constructed barriers mm -hmm. that make it extremely difficult uh, for, for, for girls to, mm. to, to emerge. Charles, you have five daughters? I know. Four, four daughters? <laughs> I'm sure you also have a lot to weigh in based on I'll add what others. William said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, earlier before the show began, um, um, no, no, when the show had just begun, William introduced himself as a feminist and... Um, I, I must com confess that uh, one of the countries I have not been to is Zimbabwe, and even though if they, they, they hosted uh, a very big African women's cricket tournament a few, week, a few weeks ago, and the Rwandan women's team did perform uh, quite well in that one. But I, I think I want to echo what Bana was saying around the cultural challenges that we have vis-a-vis uh, the expectations. And to me, my, my, my biggest concern is, we, to a large extent, I get the feeling that we are ticking the box around the numbers. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That we have 62% representation. We have, by requirement, 30% that should be in whatever level of, of, uh, of leadership. That, um, that, you ha you, that you must have a gender representation at the Mudugudu sector and whatever level. So, so you're just ticking the box. Now, that has one very, very dangerous uh, um, repercussion, that we may lose out on women of substance, yet we actually have them. Yes. And Rwanda has proven that we are not short of women of substance. But because we have to tick a box, <laughs> mm. we end up having people who do not fit the caliber, but they must be there for purposes of ticking the box. What is your, what is your alternative scenario then? My alternative... I'd like to respond to that. ...is yes, that let us do away <laughs> with this quota system <laughs> and so, insist mm. on merit. Just very quickly, Brenda, I know... My Even if we insisted on merit, yes. <laughs> I am confident that we will still achieve the quotas. Can I make one comment? Yes. I know I, I never, William and uh, Robin, I never make comments. <laughs> My job is to moderate and get as yes. much from you and our guests. But Charles, um, yeah, that comment coming from you as a man. Yes. <laughs> Two things, yes. Um, yesterday I was talking to a young lady um, regarding gender equality and feminism, especially from a Rwandan perspective. And uh, she, she said something very interesting. Her name is Dominic. And she said that, look, uh, I, I really don't want to talk about gender equality per se in Rwanda. I think what we need to focus on is gender parity. And she gave a very vivid example. She said, imagine if uh, you gave a boy a box and you give a girl a box, or you give a man a box and a woman a box. And then this box is supposed to signify, uh, symbolize equality. That's fine. Both of you have boxes. But this boy or this man for thousands of years has been getting boxes and boxes and boxes. <laughs> This girl, this is her first, first box that she's getting. I'm talking about historical privilege. And all of a sudden, you want this girl and this boy to utilize that box in the same manner. It can happen. It can. So unfortunately, what we need to do, or fortunately for women, is to understand this, one. Uh, uh, two, 
actually implement you know, uh, systems where the girl maybe gets three boxes, uh, you know, to try and catch up with the boy who has historically, historically been privileged in getting boxes. So I think these quotas are there for a reason. They're there to ensure representation of women because historically there's been an imbalance whereby you cannot address it by saying this is a level playing field. Both of you go and do this same expectations when history has, has proved otherwise. Very well, briefly. Well, uh, very briefly. <laughs> yes. uh, my, my argument, I, I will concur with you to a very large extent. Yes. My point is we have gone past that. You think so? I yes. Think, I think that's what it I, feels I, I, like. I, but... I, 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 and I believe that was the point probably 10, 15 years ago. Mm. Today, <coughs> that's not necessarily the case. I don't. Benna, very quickly before no, I, no, I hear no, from no, Robin. No. Yes. Especially in Rwanda. <laughs> I, I, very, very quickly. Yeah. I think we, we need to acknowledge that we need to start somewhere. We need to start somewhere, and that's where the quotas come in. So without the quotas, I mean, what would be the basis? That's one. Two, I think that we shouldn't undermine the role of role modeling. You know, if you grow up in a society where you're seeing women doing things, for young girls, that shows that they can do something. And what we're seeing now with many women in positions of power, even if it's a different question in terms of their effectiveness, at least we have role models. You know, for young girls to grow up seeing ministers, you know, seeing powerful women around them, mm. it helps in terms of building for the future. So if you ask me, I don't think it's wrong to, to, um, to kind of, and we haven't arrived, no. We, we haven't. Charles thinks we've arrived. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> and uh, I think that's the problem yeah. because you, you, we are increasingly also seeing uh, arguments saying, oh, boys now need a push. Mm. We haven't arrived. We are far from where we want to be, mm. you know, because we, have, we still have very many vulnerable women, very many vulnerable children. And if you look at the face of the most pressing development challenges that we face, it's still a female face, yeah. you know. Yes. If it's poverty, the so female woman. face is still a woman. So in terms of progress, we're still far from where we want to be. Rabina, I, I can see you've been, you have, a lot, <laughs> you have yeah. a lot to share, yes. Yeah, Chess, I'm sorry I'm not agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also running away. Uh, uh, as a gender focal person working mm. for YWCA Rwanda, mm. uh, if I may just tell you, yes, YWCA sure. Rwanda is a global movement mm -hmm. that focuses on the empowerment of young girls and women in ensuring that they get the leadership skills, they get empowered, they, they get sexual productive health, but we still see gaps still surface. Mm -hmm. If we agree with Charis to remove the quotas, mm -hmm. we, we find that girls will be left put, behind. I mean, will be left behind. Mm -hmm. So when we bring in the Girls Get Equal campaign, mm -hmm. it is so unique. Mm -hmm. It is so unique in a way that it will looks be far beyond the issues we talk about, the legal, the policies, the good policies, and it looks at the historical injustices, mm. historical injustices that uh, left our girls at stake, mm. backwards. Mm. So <clears throat> if we, we remove the quotas, it means that girl who, who is you know, taken to be a domestic worker, mm -hmm. who is given time, I mean, who, who is not given time to read the books and the boy is given time to read the books and as the girl is doing domestic work, mm -hmm. she will not be able to excel. And who will be the person to blame? The girl herself. Take an example, I can give you an example. If you can have a look at uh, the Rwanda, the, the report that was produced by the Gender Monitoring, Monitoring Office, Office. Mm -hmm. 2008. And 19, mm -hmm. uh, it is about the state on gender equality. It clearly brings out issues, mm -hmm. gaps that still surface, mm -hmm. gaps in voluntary, when you look at the technical and voluntary ed, uh, education, mm -hmm. we still see g girls themselves taking, you know, these w traditional Catering. Mm -hmm. We may call them traditional Vocation. vocational yes. courses, yes. like it, catering, like, uh, like uh, Just, you know, yes, because mm -hmm. the mindset, the mindset, the biases that we still have in our communities do not allow her to go in and take, you know, engineering like mm -hmm. the boys. Mm -hmm. So what will happen? Even what you have mm -hmm. as in financial 
means. I mean, the, the, the rewarding will not be enough. So we need to promote the quotas to come and support. We need the, the, girl, the, girl, uh, the girls get equal campaign to come and fill the gaps mm. that still surface within our communities to ensure that our girls come at the table. Mm. Yeah, mm. so that is, um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, I'm no, not to agree I mean, there's, the, yeah. there's a lot I, of evidence. Mm. And back to what you're saying, uh, let's look at uh, VW. Mm -hmm. uh, just last week, mm -hmm. their launch. We know that their motto, they are trying to promote women drivers. Mm -hmm. So with far, the move. yes, with the move. They're struggling to get the numbers of female drivers. So we cannot talk about progress. There's steady progress, but we're not there. We are not there yet. But Charles, I would like to, well, I, I, Charles, very I, I, quickly, yes. I would like to genuinely find out yes. why do you think we have arrived? I'd like to pick I, your brain a bit on that yes, question, and, on that issue. I, I, I'm, going to give, I'm going to give the response twofold. Mm -hmm. One at a very, very personal level. Yes, of course. Uh, I run a fairly small uh, business. And when we call for adverts at a very senior level, general manager, women's, women always stand out. And they take up the jobs at a very competitive level. About 68% of our staff are women. And they do extremely well. They outshine the boys. But that's just maybe, it may not be the best example to give because we are a fairly small business and we may not be representative of, of, uh, of uh, the, the business community. And this is why I wanted to argue with, with Bana a little bit. I, I, I know for a fact that if you to look at uh, CEO level owners of businesses, uh, government might not be a very good example because most of them is appointment. But where I want to go back to government is when you look at the way they perform, you then ask yourself, do we need necessarily to continue on the quota system? Yet, even the few, well, some of the few that we put there really do the, themselves a huge favor and do the country a favor by performing well. I, I don't know, and I'm sure where uh, Robin and, uh, and, and, and uh, my really? friend from, uh, from Zim comes from, mm. maybe where they're coming from, they're going to dazzle us with statistics in the rural areas, <laughs> and uh, I may not be extremely mm. conversant with that. Yeah. But I, I, where I'm coming from is purely from a point of view of quality. Mm. Mm. Yeah. William. I think we, and, and just before William, you come in, mm -hmm. I want to give two examples. Okay. Bana and Diana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two strong media personalities in this country, mm -hmm. not because they are women. Mm -hmm. Purely on merit. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> but what I think is, is, is fundamental for us to understand is for us to really get uh, movement or achievements within the issues around uh, transformation in gender issues, mm -hmm. We have to tackle the root causes of gender inequality because what the, the temptation is to see the numbers and a few women making it, mm -hmm. then we make the assumption that it is now okay. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about real transformation, let's get to the root causes of um, gender inequality. Mm -hmm. So gender inequality is rooted in harmful social norms, power dynamics that happen at individual level. So by the time it goes to national level, it is glossed by a lot of things, but let's take down to the person. So what is that perception or mindset that comes to a person when they see a young girl? Do they see power, potential, opportunity, good things, or, or what do they see? Even the girl themselves, what do they see in themselves? Mm. Do they value themselves? Do they value their contribution to their family, to their society? So, so long we have unequal gender dynamics mm. in a very patriarchal society. Same as in my country in Zimbabwe, very patriarchal society, where the, the traditional roles for men are much more progressive in nature and much more fulfilling in terms of their own personal achievement, and women are supposed to play a supporting role. So, so if we take um, a minister, right, who is a woman, we place her there. I can tell you that if we sit 100 people around the table, 100 people are seeing different things. Mm. So some people 
in their mindset are saying, well, she's still a woman. She has to work extra hard than the men to prove that she's capable, which is why you see this trend in we celebrate the very high achievers in women, but actually that is actually coming from uh, a harmful social norm that says mm -hmm. for you to be recognized as a woman, you have to go extra, exactly. right? So you have to put in a lot of work to be recognized. So unless we deal with that, and which is why the Girls Get Equal campaign talks about how they are valued, seen, and heard. Mm -hmm. So valued and seen. How do we see our girls in Rwanda? Do we value them? Despite what they're able to do, just them, before you describe and say she's a successful uh, media personality, before that, do you think she's of any value? Or she first of all needs to prove to you that she's a successful media person for you to say, ah, okay, fine. Yeah, the dad is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yes. mentioning that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think that, um, you, you know, you, you hit the net right on the top because the little I know from engaging with uh, the successful women. You have to undo yourself, you know, at the workplace. Mm. You have to work extra hours. You have to forget the feminine side of you for you to actually compete. And, you know, it goes back to the barriers, the social contract uh, constructs. If she's pregnant and she's off, she's forced to come back to work because she's, she's afraid, she doesn't want to lose her job. And then she still has to prove. I mean, we have cases where women are denied jobs because they are pregnant. These cases are there. And oh, oh, actually, women are denied jobs because they have the potential to fall pregnant. Just yes, because yes, they're yes, women. Yes, yes. They're not yes. even pregnant yet. Yes, they're not pregnant yet, but yeah. saying, uh, oh, this is a young person, she's going to get pregnant soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have that. Secondly, in most workplaces, you'll find women who are doing more work than their male counterparts but still they will not get the promotions that they deserve. So we... We, mm. we, have, to, we have a long way yeah. to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I well, know that Charlie is playing the devil's advocate, <laughs> no, no, which no, is I'm fine. Not, I'm not. I'm not it's, I just come from a point of view where I've been ex, uh, uh, to a very large extent impressed mm. by the abilities of women. Mm. But William has said something that I'd never thought about, that um, by the time they get there, they have worked I know. extremely tirelessly mm. for us to, to recognize them and probably explains the reason why um, for the first time at the FIFA World Cup we had women award, so no, sorry, at the FIFA uh, Football Awards, mm. we had women give awards just because the American uh, team had won mm. the, the Women's World, World Cup. Cup. So, mm. yeah. no, you, yeah. you, you, you've given me a twist I'd not thought about. I must give you credit <laughs> for that. <laughs> uh, the next topic that we want to tackle is to do with teenage pregnancies. Of course, we can't have this conversation without dealing with this serious issue. We've had this conversation on the square before, where we talk about teenage pregnancies, the causes, the solutions. You know, how how can we curb this? And um, before I open up this topic, this segment of overall conversation tonight, uh, I would like us to just hear again from some of the people we interviewed uh, ahead of today's show on teenage pregnancies and how they think uh, this is something we can stop or give ideas on how we can curb this issue. So yeah, we can curb teenage pregnancies one by making sure that sex is not a taboo, you know. Uh, we've seen teenage young girls go get pregnant, yet we still have these parents who don't want to talk about it. So sex is no longer a taboo. Let's not, let's call a sped a sped and not a big spoon. One of the ways ensure that they understand what ABC is, abstaining, if they can't abstain, condoms, you know, if they can't be faithful, all these things. Let's make sure that sex is not a taboo. That is one way to eradicate teenage pregnancies, let them understand their rights, their body rights, what they can go to hospital, uh, get contraceptives, you know, all these things. Let's talk about it in our homes. Let's not make it a taboo. Yeah, so about teenage pregnancy, it's still, still a big challenge because I personally think that it has something to do with poverty. So you'll find that mo most of the teenagers who, who get pregnant earlier are teenagers in rural areas and they are always facing um, those ch financial challenges and they always get tempted or they 
they get impregnated by men who can actually offer them some of the things they lack. So that's one aspect of the ch big challenge we have. And I think that solving poverty is going to be one of, the, it's actually the ultimate solution. But then the other thing is education. The, the one that, it, that can be worked on every day and, and that is more practical. I would say that education, sex education should not be a taboo in our societies. It should be something, as we learn Kinyaranda in school, sex ed education should be the same. Ch kids and children at the very early age, they should start learning about sex education so that it's not that mysterious thing where they have to learn from strangers. And I believe that's one of the things of um, that increases teenage pregnancy. The parents, the schools, you find that kids don't have any reliable source for sex education. And uh, through the, the raising of awareness and poverty eradication, those two will definitely be our ultimate solutions, yes. Uh, parents not opening up to their kids. Parents should um, open up and tell their kids different things that are in our world today because the world is changing a lot. And, you know, so that they can know and prevent themselves before not parents nowadays open up when there is uh, something that happened to their kids and then start giving them advices but then they should give them advices before anything else happens So those are the views so far, just from a few uh, people that we managed to talk to on teenage pregnancies. Robin, I'll, I'll turn to you, I'll hand over to you on what do you think are some of the um, methods or strategies we need to do to curb this? Because the world is changing, um, like we heard from most of them, sure. the issue I think needs to start at home. Parents need to talk to their children, we need to demystify sexual reproductive health amongst other things, but yes, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Dana. <coughs> yeah, I really agree with you that uh, this issue of teenage pregnancy is, is increasing because when we see in the figures mm -hmm. from the demographic survey of 20, 2014 and 2015, it clearly reveals to us that the percentage of teen pregnancy is at 7.3%. Mm -hmm. So this causes us... It, yeah, it, 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 it clearly shows us that we need to come up with corrective actions to curb the 7.3%. The, the, the mm -hmm. But before we curb it, we need to first find out what are the causes, what are the root causes. We, we have to look at causes like poverty, defilement, GBV cases, you know, and lack of knowledge on sexual reproductive health. Mm -hmm. So we come in as YWC in collaboration with our partner like Pran to raise, I mean, to raise awareness. We need our girls to be at school. We need to ensure that they are supported. We create, well, we, we, we ensure that we keep our girls at school. Mm -hmm. So what are the, what are, what are, what are, what do we do? We focus on prevention mm -hmm. and also response because we have to look at the girls who have not be, who have not yet been teen mothers, mm -hmm. but again, we have to cater for those who are already teen mothers. So, for those who are not yet teen mothers, we focus on the dissemination of sexual and productive health mm -hmm. because one of the causes we saw up there is that they lack the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, we teach our girls sexual and productive health, we give them uh, more sexual behavior knowledge, we give them awareness on on how to access contraceptives and also encourage them to abstain till mm -hmm. they to, 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 uh, to do as abstinence mm -hmm. till when they get to till when they get married. Mm -hmm. So we also focus on promoting uh, financial education because mm -hmm. we know we have poverty. Mm -hmm. Our girls go into sexual intercourse because they are poor. Mm -hmm. So we at YWC we focus on the five core elements of children or even people in life mm. yeah? children are taught we taught our girls to uh, on personal understanding and respo and uh, exploration they need to know to explore their weaknesses mm -hmm. and work on you know the
filling the gaps. Mm -hmm. We teach them on their rights and responsibilities. Yes, it is your right to go for a condom, but it is your responsibility to put on that condom well. Mm -hmm. We go ahead to teach them on saving and budgeting. They have to grow up when they are actually responsible citizens. Mm -hmm. They have to know that they have to first actually save before even they, they spend. Mm. So saving is part of, mm. you know, spending. So we go ahead also to put on table budgeting and planning, mm. you know. Girls have to grow up when they know how to budget. Mm. You know, some of those issues, if we, are not, we don't raise them when they're still young, mm. those are the issues that come back for our girls to do what? To, to, get, to get into problems. Mm. Then we bring in the issue of social and economic uh, empowerment. Mm. Social and economic empowerment that girls are trained on starting small-scale businesses, mm -hmm. training them that that money you've saved, you need to use it to buy a chicken, you know, and that chicken can help you buy, you know, uh, scholastic materials, so that if this girl meets a man on the way, she's not, she's not forced to take the, the coin from that man because she already has the money mm -hmm. that she has sold from maybe the eggs mm -hmm. she, 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 was, she, she sold mm -hmm. from the, her kitchen, mm -hmm. I mean from mm -hmm. her hands. Mm -hmm. So we also tackle GBV because still in the demographic survey, we, uh, figures show that uh, GBV is one of the highest cause of teen pregnancy. So as YWCA and Plan International, we focus on teaching our girls concepts on gender, concepts on GBV prevention and response, and also bringing men to be to be the to be the, the, the to, 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 to be the, to spearhead mm. to spearhead this uh, this campaign mm. of fighting for girls' rights. So we also bring on table. Uh, GBV prevention mechanism, anti-GBV prevention mechanism mm. that uh, bring together all the stakeholders mm. to ensure that we work hand in hand with the national police, with the national commission for children to ensure that girls' issues mm. are at heart. Mm. They are disseminated and people come up with different solutions to yeah. ensure that the, the issues mm. are tackled. So when it comes to the response part of it for girls who are already teen mothers, mm. we cater for their reintegration into the society so we bring we have a, a model safe space model mm -hmm. where girls are put into model given holistic approaches sexual productive health mm -hmm. cater for their children and also ensure that they are given economic empowerment programs yeah, yeah. Um, i'd like to just throw a spanner in the works just very quickly to you william Berna and charles because we don't have many minutes left but in this whole teenage pregnancy conversation one thing we need to make part and par parcel is the men, the impregnators, or the, the, the <laughs> defilers, because mm. you know, so most teenage pregnancies, you know, it's a 13 year old, you'll find that is not even 17 and a half going on 18. You know, um, someone who probably has a bit more worldly experience to, to, to make decisions, uh -huh. but a lot of it really is, is, is the perpetrators. I think that's what I would say, perpetrators, not impregnators, but perpetrators. Where are they in this, comp in this conversation? Actually, with the limited minutes I have, I just want us to visualize. Mm -hmm. So a girl is pregnant. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's no family conflict. There's rejection and stigma by the community. Mm -hmm. She's likely going to face challenges with the health delivery system. She's still young, so childbirth, uh, you know, complications can arise. Mm -hmm. Her options in life are now limited. At that point, her options are now very limited because probably she will drop out of school. Uh, Opportunities to go out and seek income are limited because she has this baby to take care of. And then we fast forward, mm -hmm. the baby girl born of this girl is also likely mm -hmm. to also have a teenage pregnancy. Why? Because the mother did not have sufficient income. Probably this child might suffer from malnutrition mm -hmm. because the mother was not uh, uh, able to feed uh, holistically. So you see how we are perpetuating the problem. So let's go back. And for me, the problem of this pregnant girl did not start when she got pregnant. It started before she was even conceived. Mm -hmm. It started from the two parents. Our assumption in society is when two people decide to have a child, they have some qualification in parenting. <laughs> okay. By default, I know how to be a parent because yes. I now have a child. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Because 
the moment a child is born and brought into the world as parents we must start to build up the personality the confidence the character of that girl so that at age 14 and 15 even if in a poverty situation she has the confidence to say to this man well actually i'm not interested i'm not interested in advances i don't think this is a solution to my poverty so actually no mm. so that confidence so trying to talk to girls about confidence around issues of sexuality at age 15 is too late unfortunately by that stage Very so automatically it doesn't switch on mm. and say now i'm confident now i know the life skills now we, as parents we can now talk about sexuality issues in the household because we assumed by being parents they know mm. you'll be surprised the number of parents who actually know issues of sexuality and especially how to communicate to children because you have to communicate in a specific way mm. so i think our approach should be a life cycle approach before a child is born and we have parents when the child is born the environment they grow up in when they actually start to interact with other children in ecd centers primary education secondary education in the larger community this is where we need to build the life skills of girls and this is where the men like said the impregnators the perpetrators come from same community of the 40 year old man who thinks it's perfectly okay to sleep with this young teenager we have a problem because if, if, if a person has that mentality, then seriously we have a problem. So no matter how we try to have girls access information and develop the confidence to say no, but there's this huge wave of perpetrators that would be there. So we need to do it community at holistic level, but we need to start right toward the life cycle. By the time we talk about a pregnant girl, unfortunately it's too late. It's too late. But however, we need to invest in supporting those girls. Like she said, reintegration into communities is difficult. Income generating activities become limited. Access to education becomes complicated. So we need a holistic support for those that are not yet teen mothers and those that are teen mothers. Mm. That's, that's, that's my view. A, a very interesting point on the life cycle, it's starting with before she was even conceived, mm -hmm. conceived there was an issue mm -hmm. with, with the parents. Brenna, do you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I think just very briefly, he's, uh, yeah. he's covered it. He's covered it, uh, yeah. yeah. I want to weigh <laughs> in on the, on the life cycle. I'm surprised, Brenna, you don't have much to say <laughs> on that. But, uh, no. but yeah, very eloquently yeah. put forward. Yes, perhaps yeah, no, the no, only we, small thing I would add is that uh, the young boys, because uh, part of the numbers show that th some of these girls are impregnated by their age peers. Rights, you know? peers. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So the conversation has to begin at home mm. uh, for both, you know, the boys and girls to understand their bodies and understand what could actually happen. Mm. But most of the time, like he's saying, it comes too late. Mm. It, you know, mm. 15, 14, it's mm. it's too late. Mm. Actually, she, she just she, she read my mind perfectly, and I think uh, between WCA, YWC, and uh, Plan. It's something that you need to look into because even at the boarding school levels where, where or in their communities where they are, uh, I get the feeling that there's so much emphasis on the girls mm. and we are forgetting the boys. Uh, if, if, if you go to boarding schools, uh, to what extent are the boys sensitized not to get involved with the girls? Mm. Or is the, are the girls only prepared against the vultures, the 40-year-old vultures who are out there. <laughs> yes, so that's, that's, that, and that, that is worrying in my yeah. opinion, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if I can compliment him. Yes. Uh, at YWCA, we actually experienced that. Before we, we were focusing on empowerment of girls living around the boys, mm. but we had a, an experience of a project in Nyaruguru, keeping girls at school. So whenever I could go there, the boys would say, we are going to come up with our keep, keep us, you know, keeping boys at school. Mm. So that gave us a clear indicator that boys also need this information. Absolutely. So from that time, it was a lesson learned to include also boys. Mm. So we are now using the approach of Boys for Change, mm. male champions, to spearhead, to come out and, you know, and fight for the mm. rights of mm. the girls mm. uh, after when they have actually known what exactly Absolutely. the real rights they are supposed to fight for. Absolutely. Uh, let's quickly go to our Twitter feed. We have a couple of tweets that have come in this evening. And the first tweet we have agrees with Charles. Uh, and Bing, 92683, <laughs> anonymous. Uh, anonymous, says that I agree with Haba. We've checked the boxes. We now need more exemplary functionality women. We need more. Okay, uh, I have a feeling being is a man, but uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, the next tweet is from Claude, and Claude says that, hey guys, what a great show. Remember that Rome was not built in one night. Uh, gender equality is a process. I am happy to see how gender equality is progressing well in Rwanda. 
the world should learn from Rwanda. There's only two tweets for this evening. Uh, I would like to give closing remarks to our guests very briefly. I'll start with you, Rabina. Very yeah. briefly. Yeah. So, as we, I wonder, uh, as I rewind or as I close, as at YWCA, mm -hmm. we believe in putting girls, we believe in empowering girls, mm -hmm. many and many girls, mm -hmm. building their leadership skills, sexual productive health, mm -hmm tackling the parents, giving them skills, mm. and also putting their mm. safe spaces so that girls can have a safe, a, a safe space, a place where they can exercise, where they can get their views. Their views. Yeah. I just want us to read one last tweet because I, found, I find it very interesting uh, before we close the show. And this tweet I think is very important. It's from Richard and he says, to achieve girls' rights and equality, us men and boys need to acknowledge the male privilege that we have due to hist historical patriarchy. Most men do not know this because we enjoy the privilege of masculinity. This is regressive. Men need to be, in quotes, different men. I will leave closing remarks to you. Uh, I don't know if you want to comment on that tweet, but please go ahead. Spot on. Spot Fantastic. On. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. That recognition is very important. Yes. But my closing remarks is, is to say the girls here in Rwanda cannot wait anymore. This is the time. We need to be allies. We are allies as Plan International and broader civil society. Mm. I am a feminist. I will support the girls, but they need all our support mm. because the time is now. Not investing in girls, by the way, which is 52% of the population, is not smart economics or smart strategy if they are the largest numbers. So the girls cannot wait anymore. This is the time. So let's go out. Let girls be seen, be heard, be valued so that girls get equal. Thank you very much. Very eloquent, eloquent feminist you are, William. Great to have had you on the show. Robina, thank you for sharing um, important work that YWCA is doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Charles, always a pleasure to have you. Uh, we need to debate your views <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, Verna, always a pleasure to have you. Thank and you. to our viewers, thank you for watching. I would like to thank our partners, Uzi Collection and Bourbon Coffee as always, for being part of The Square. And uh, please keep the conversation going using the hashtag TheSquareRW on your screens. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again next week. Have a good night.
ubuzima iki gitangaza tumaranira cyageze hano ku isi mu myaka miliyari nyishize naho twebwe abantu twaje ejo bundi mu myaka 2200 ishize ariko ninduzi inkomoko yacu n'ubuzima turimo ese ubiyo tumenye yo dukomoka iyo tujya tukamenya makuru avugu yava tukamenye uyatangaza byari kugenda bite ubiyo tuza kumenya inkomoko y'ubuzima ikora na buhanga imibereho n'imibanire y'abantu n'ibintu bizima n'impamvu tuba huko tubaye huko yari kugenda bite kuri kiri kiganira inkomoko kuri televiziyo Rwanda buri kuwa kane isatatu n'igice z'ijoro